So hello there, Sophie Clifton Tucker. It's amazing to welcome you to our SG five minute feature. We have so many things to discuss because I know that you have been so busy in the past few years and I am extremely excited to talk to you about all your different roles, uh, but especially about the founding of Little English. So I'm just gonna quickly tell everybody all of the different things that you're doing at the moment very quickly, as quickly as I can. Um, so you're the editor of the Gibraltar Business Magazine. You are a mum to be, which is very exciting too. I know that you're running a book club series on the Gibraltar Broadcasting Corporation channel. Uh, you're the founder of Little English, and you also recently became the PR and communication officer for the Downtown Business Improvement District Project. So how do you juggle all these different roles and how do you get a good balance in your life you know that's probably the thing i get asked the most and i still haven't got a concrete answer for you <laughs> uh, with great difficulty is the answer and many lists and uh, a google calendar that is chocked full to the brim with alarms and alerts basically uh, a lot of organization and passion that's fantastic i mean organization is the key i feel to being able to be more efficient so maybe not work more but work smart like they say um there are so many tools out there to be able to juggle uh, different roles as you know we know um as working moms or mom to be in your case but uh, it's definitely a different transition um, so with all of that experience, we're going to jump right in into Little English and setting up a business in Gibraltar, because I think that's kind of the conversation that we need to have more often as we were discussing before we started the, the feature. So when do you think you suddenly became, you know, made that decision to say, that's it, I'm going to start something up and went for Little English? How did this come about? Um, well, after university, I decided I'm going to get out of Dodge. I'm going to travel the world, you know, all these big dreams. Um, to be fair, I did. I did travel around quite a lot and um, went through South America, Southeast Asia. I, I went to live in Australia for a while and then New Zealand, um, which I did with my partner. And um, we were both teachers. We were teaching to fund our travels, essentially. And it got to a point where I thought, I just want to be the boss. <laughs> I, want, I want to do, you know, I want to run my own school. Because when you've worked in a number of different places, you learn the best elements of each one, what makes it work, what perhaps doesn't work as well. And I was just so keen to see if I could put this together and how that might look. Um, having absolutely no business experience, it was a bit optimistic. Um, I just have, I just had an English degree and a teaching degree. So, you know, what do I know? And um, anything to do with business in the world of business, to me, felt alien, terrifying, scary. How on earth am I going to do that? But I thought, OK, let's give it a crack. Let's start small, see how it goes. And we decided to move back to uh, Gibraltar after a brief stint in Tokyo, again teaching. Um, so my partner and I decided to go in together, which was also very brave because <laughs> crossing those wires between love and business is it's a whole different ball game. But we made it work. He's very laid back and I'm very anal about everything, you know, it has to be <laughs> to, the, to the lesser. So it worked perfectly, to be honest. Um, and I thought, well, at least in Gibraltar, there's a community to help. You know, I, I have a friend who's a lawyer. I've got a friend who's an accountant. I've got people that will that will help. Whereas somewhere, I don't know, let's say England, I'm just a small fish in a big pond. And that, I think, was really I've got to say the key to the success in the beginning I think it might have taken a lot longer if I had done it elsewhere and I do owe it to our incredibly robust resilient and kind community for helping me to get on my feet so quickly yeah well I mean there's so many key elements to what you've just put out there that I think makes a good founder one of them is that you are willing to look at your network and say you know who can I tap into who will be able to help me make this a reality um, it takes a lot of grit to be able to identify those key elements so uh, that's another of the great things 
and also it's so refreshing to hear that there there was actually something that you saw as an opportunity within the community which is which is often um i guess the 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 talent that we need more of to identify something that actually could work um and instead of just having done um your usual teaching job within a school you decided to set up your own so congratulations for that um, we we are extremely happy to see local female founders as well um, becoming successful as you as you are so let's talk about what have been the biggest obstacles that you've had to overcome during this journey of setting up your language school I mean, initially, it's the same problem, I think, globally, which is the red tape, um, which is both a detriment and a virtue to the whole business process. Um, it's not easy. You can't just say, right, I want to start a business. I'm going to open tomorrow. There's a lot of form filling. There's a lot of hoop jumping. But these barriers to entry are good for the business owner because you don't want everybody to, <laughs> to just leap yeah. into it blindly. You, it's, it's almost like a hazing process, you know? If you can't get through that initial setup process, then maybe this isn't the right avenue for you. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, that it, it was tricky. Like I said, going from writing essays about Shakespeare to suddenly being faced with the OFT and this, that, the other, it's like, it's a bit daunting. But... Um, had had some help. My dad is very good at form filling. So he sat me down and taught me what I needed to do. <laughs> and yeah, it's um, that, that I think that was probably the trickiest in the beginning. After that, my goodness, just learning on the job. It's it's so tricky. Um, and then later on, more recently, COVID, I think everyone can attest to the fact that that was hugely difficult. And now we've got the looming threat of Brexit. So there's never a dull moment. <laughs> totally I agree um but yeah you have to navigate the different obstacles I think uh the the success doesn't mean that you have to be at the level of anyone else but be a sustainable business that is bringing some kind of value and that's how you measure success uh in my book so I feel like you've overcome so many things that are, are making that project that startup a successful sustainable business um, and hopefully that will be the case going forward for a very long time so I'm just wondering as we talk what is your advice to anyone thinking of having a, a side hustle um, to begin with or jumping into the startup world that's a good question okay I think I have three main points be passionate whether it's down to a gap that you found in the market for a product or service that you would use yourself or simply something that you love doing and fuels your fire because it's instantly noticeable when a business exists for a passion or for or for the revenue i mean ideally you're going to have both but <laughs> definitely have the passion second plan 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 and plan to fail if you're wondering whether you need a business plan you do um, I mean, okay, you could go, you could dive in without one, but without one, you're going to have to iron out a lot more unexpected kinks along the way, and that will detract from your very valuable time. Lastly, I would say be resilient, don't give up. Harry Potter was turned down 10 times before it was a success, and now JK Rowling is richer than the Queen. Um, <laughs> there are going to be ups, downs, loop de loops, and you'll feel elation, despair, pride uselessness and sometimes you'll feel all those things at once but you've got to keep going keep plugging away because persistence pays off that's amazing um and so so true in in my personal experience as well um so one last thing that i'm going to throw at you because i find this is such good practical hands-on um advice to anyone who's actually thinking of an idea they have that they would love to you know pursue how did you manage to set up or, you know, build those, build the bricks, the foundation, the funding? How did you manage to get all of that together? Because I think one of the biggest things that I hear constantly is that there is no 
easy funding to start a business in Gibraltar for people who are who are thinking small. Um, I myself was bootstrapped, which is something that's quite uncommon. Um, bootstrap generally means that I made money and invested it into setting up the business and then continued to do that throughout. So tell me how you did um, the funding for Little English. Well, <laughs> I came back to Gibraltar after my travels with probably two grand in my account. That was all I had to my name. <laughs> if you want to talk figures. So when I say this was an ambitious project, I mean, it was really ambitious, verging on perhaps stupid, but I think all the best ideas are. Mm -hmm. um, but the way I did it was I kind of hermit crabbed my way. So I started off by um, renting a friend's office after hours. So they would lock up at six, give me the keys, and I would rent it between six and eight. And then I would give them a percentage of my profits. And that's all I could do at the time. When Little English started to pick up, people started to hear what we were doing about our language lessons. We then were able to share a unit with someone else in the middle of town, which was great. So we split all the costs. They were using the back part for storage. We were using the front part for lessons. I remember painting it all myself with my partner and getting the tables and chairs, which were secondhand from my, from my parents' old apartment. <laughs> it was very, very boko a boko. And, um, eventually eventually we could rent our own place uh, which is where we are today um and now we've been running for i think we're in our seventh year so we've had six years worth it's just crazy but yeah bit by bit you don't need to do everything at once you don't need the best tables and chairs and computers and all the kit and caboodle start small and keep adding to it a little bit little bit little bit and you'll get there Oh my God, I my heart is filled with joy listening to you and speaking to you because it's it's just about making what you feel is impossible possible. And, and there's always a way. So it's been amazing to share your journey, at least a little bit of it, because I know there's so much more that we could talk about for hours and hours as, as we love to do when we're together, which I wish was more often. Wait. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me today and I am really looking forward to sharing this feature and hopefully having people enjoy every little bit of the journey that you've shared with us and Sophie all the best for your maternity and your new baby <laughs> obviously that is the biggest project yet to come and oh my goodness <laughs> And make sure that you enjoy that process too, because as a working mother, I understand that we sometimes prioritize different things, but now it's going to be all about you. So enjoy it. All new journey. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs>